Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to change this into something like this using this. Hey everyone, CJ Carter here. This is a quick tip to maybe help some of you calligraphers out there or maybe some other tool builders. What we have here is a nib holder. It's pretty plain. It's This one's made out of wood with a very conventional, um, I don't even know what it's called, a grip thingy. Here we have one that's slightly different. We have this rubber, rubber addition, which does two things. It helps you grip a little bit better because it's non-slip. And it adds a little bit of bulk because I tend to find that a lot of nib holders are a little thinner than I prefer them to be. But, you know, you do what you can. In the past, I would resort to using something like uh, these sorts of pads that you use for pens and pencils, but they only really fit on the smaller nib holders. If you get something like, say, a comic holder or perhaps this repaired speedball holder, these just won't work. I needed something that was a little more flexible than that. So at first I tried electrical tape, which is what you might think this is. This is not electrical tape. But then I found something that actually came very handy. It, it's silicone tape. It comes under many brands, whether it's Magic Wrap or Rescue Tape or F4 Tape or whatever. It's still basically the same stuff. Um, I'm going to use this one. Silicone tape has the property of most silicones is that it doesn't stick to much of anything except itself. For example, uh, we have here a piece that I took off of this before I started and I had you have to cut it off because once it fuses together it basically fuses into a solid piece of rubber. It's no longer just like a tape. I mean it's just a solid piece of rubber. It's kind of what I was hoping for because so often like if you use electrical tape it'll unwind as the adhesive gets older or the tape stretches out and I wanted something a little more durable that was still waterproof and everything else. I will give you a caveat right now before you even try this. While it is true that silicone in general and silicone tape, as it's touted, sticks only to itself, that is not true. While on a wooden nib holder like this, probably shouldn't have any problem, but this painted nib holder, I don't think it's lacquered or anything. Removing the tape did remove some of the paint, and you can kind of see right here uh, a little bit. I mean, I actually have more paint missing from down here. It doesn't affect the functionality of the holder, but if you have a holder that you care about that might be actually worth money or have sentimental value, you might want not to do this technique. Fair warning. Okay, so what do you need to do this? Well, of course, you need your nib holder. You need some silicone tape. To help you out, you need some sort of scissors. These are finer than you probably have, but that's what I have. And either a scalpel or a craft knife just to tidy up some edges. But basically, it's pretty simple. So all you have to do is wrap the tape around and overlap it. And we'll do that right now, right after the break. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is measure out enough tape to cover the bottom part of our holder. So all silicone tapes, as far as my experience has been, is covered with either a plastic or paper or something that keeps one side from sticking to the side that is underneath. This isn't adhesive. It isn't sticky. I mean, it feels rubbery, but it doesn't feel sticky. So what you want to do first is to measure off an amount, and I find that two wraps around the, the handle gives you a pretty good approximation. So kind of keep track of where it is, 
and we're going to cut off that amount of tape. Here we go. Now I like to have nice even edges around the end because you know it's actually easier. You know, that means you don't have to really clean up the edges much or anything. Now when you apply this tape you have to stretch it at least twice its length. So what I do is that you take a corner of the tape, you wrap it halfway around so that the middle of the tape is at about the halfway around point, maybe a little bit less. So I'm feeling that it's about right there. So I'm going to want to cut a line from that point through that point straight across. And that'll give me the angle that I need. And I will mimic that angle right here on the bottom side. This part isn't quite as critical because you can kind of futz with it. And I'm going to pull the backing off the tape now. Now every tape is a little bit different. Uh, they have various properties of elasticity. For example, this is marketed as rescue tape. If you stretch it, it pretty much stretches back. The uh, magic wrap that I showed you before, if you stretch it, it retains a lot of that stretch. So you will probably have to do one or two tests just to see what kind of tape you have. This one, for example, after you've wrapped it and until it fuses, tends not to just be a solid hunk of rubber right away. And that can cause you some issues if you have a nick in it and it'll just split on you. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So since this is not a very stretchy tape, I'm going to have to stretch it while I'm wrapping it around. There's Pre-stretching isn't going to do me any good, really. So we start here at the end. And I'm going to wrap it around so that this halfway point meets up with this point right here that I just started with. So we just start wrapping around and stretch because according to the instructions you need to overlap this by 50% or half its width. So after you get it started you can kind of see this indentation right here. That helps you know how much your overlap is and you can kind of gauge what you're doing as you're wrapping. You kind of want to keep that line in the middle. So as I'm wrapping, I'm also really pulling. I mean, this is it not pulled, and I'm pulling pretty hard. And you just wrap it around as smoothly as you can. Because you want to get a nice tight wrap going. And as you can see right now, we've gotten to the edge of my cut point. So this is going to be kind of straight across. So at this point, you can start looking at keeping this line straight across and neat. And everything should come out OK. And this last part, you just kind of muscle it through and stretch it for all it's worth. And just press it on. And there you have a freshly wrapped handle. If you need to trim it up, you can take a scalpel or your craft knife and you can trim up the edges a little bit. I really don't have to here, I don't think. Uh, you can neaten up these things and occasionally this last corner that you put down, it'll come up. So just take your scissors and just clean up the end when it's necessary. Some of these tapes will fuse into a solid piece of rubber within minutes. Others will take about a day. So, I mean, you can use this perfectly fine, but if you do get a nick in it, it might unravel right away. And let's kind of show you what I mean. I'm going to cut that. And you can see right away, I mean, there's so much tension in the tape right now that just the smallest little nick will pull it away. However, using the same tape, and this has lasted for more than 24 hours. It's now a solid piece of rubber. There wasn't that sort of tension on it. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, why you need to test your tape. Some of them will be more prone to split like that if you get a nick in them too early before they've actually bonded. 
So if you can wait 24 hours, you're going to be safe almost in every case. Some tapes are going to be better than others, like I said. So in any case, in the end, you'll end up like this. And as you can see, I have this on like a comic pen. I have it on a triangular pen. I even have it on one of my scalpels, I think. Let me see if I can pull one out here. I even have it on a scalpel. It doesn't have to be something that's round. Uh, you could wrap it around your craft knife, but since you kind of need this knurled edge to get your blade on and off, that might not be a great idea unless you're holding it all the way back here. Still, if you have a handle that needs wrapping or you want a better grip on, this is a very good way of doing it. So like I say, rescue tape, magic wrap, Whatever your poison, it works just fine and is a great, great addition to your toolbox. So try it out and uh, like I said, don't risk anything that you can't afford to lose. You might, you could possibly ruin something, but you probably won't. So I'll see you all again next time.